Good morning again, and welcome to Crosslink Radio, where we talk about health from the eye teeth on down. I'm here to help you understand some of the mysteries of health from the perspective of the oral health care provider. That's me, Shirley Kutkowski. I'm a clinical dental hygienist, and I'm in the prevention mode, helping you keep your health at its optimum by bringing you a wide variety of guests with the information that you want to know and the information you need to know. And I'm joined today again on The Sugar Show with Dr. Peldiak who is a general practice retired dentist in Michigan and my resident sugar expert. And uh, we're going to be talking about probably the hottest sugar in the last 10 years or the hottest sweetener in the last 10 years, stevia. Um, we're going to be joined again by Dr. Sam Abraham, who is a highly experienced principal research scientist with particular expertise in the field of microbiology, biochemistry, food safety, and bioprocessing for both pharmaceutical and food ingredients. He is knowledgeable in carbohydrates, low-calorie uh, low artificial sweeteners, enzymes, antibiotics, proteins, organic acids, and food flavors. Dr. Abraham has, uh, was external research liaison for Kraft Foods with universities and with universities for research projects related to molecular biology and microbial screening and holds three bioprocessing patents. In January of 2005, he took an early retirement offer from Kraft Foods and formed his own biotechnology company providing technical and marketing consultation for new startup biotech and food companies. He's a member of the American Chemical Society, American Society of Microbiology, and the Society of Industrial Microbiology. Thank you for joining us again, Dr. Abraham, and hello again, Dr. Peldiak. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> so, Dr. Abraham, uh, tell us about stevia. Everybody is using stevia. Right. Uh, before I will talk about stevia, I want to give some... Um, uh, introduction to the zero calorie sweetener in general. Uh, zero calorie sweetener can be classified into three categories. Natural sweeteners, which is naturally available in plant or can be reduced by microbial fermentation. Synthetic sweeteners, which is uh, uh, can develop by synthetic chemistry. And semi-synthetic uh, sweetener, which using natural compound and they use synthetic chemistry to develop new compounds that are not exist naturally. Uh, stevia is already in the category of natural sweetener because it's plant extract. Uh, stevia, uh, if you say about chemical structure, it's uh, uh, the, the, the base structure of stevial glycoside. This is this chemical structure in, in the middle. And uh, from this chemical structure, there is some attachment which you can make to uh, chemical structure which you have the sweetness taste from stevia. The first one on left is the stevioside. We found on the uh, stevioglucoside, there is the attachment. An OH group, there is the glucose unit. And in the another OH group, on the top, there is another uh, glucose unit. So a stevioside is uh, stevioglucoside with three glucose units, one uh, with three glucose units. Uh, uh, the another chemical structure is rib, uh, ribu, uh, ribuducide A. We're calling sometimes called the Rip A or, or Ribina A. It's also um, using the stevioside to the one structure in the middle, and it has also attached glucose. There's only uh, one glucose or H group on, on the bottom here, similar to stevioside, but the different than stevioside, instead of we have two attachments of glucose unit, there is three glucose units attached to the OH group and the side. So the difference between stevioside and ribuside is only extra glucose unit attaching. It means they have this, the, the ribicide has four glucose units and the sebocide has three glucose units. And both of these two uh, uh, chemical structures, sebocide or ribicide, those are the sweetness states, state, the sweetness uh, of uh, stevia and they are located in the, in the, the stevia leaf. The stem is very, very low in sweetness. So usually uh, the, mate, the way to, to produce stevia, uh, stevia uh, sweetness is by extraction of the stevia plant uh, leaf. Uh, stevia is already, the plant is known by the name, uh, Latin name, Stevia ribudiana. 
it's actually it's a native of uh, this plant is native part of South America, and also has been found also in South in several part of uh, Asia countries. Uh, it's as I mentioned, common common name that means a common name for this already called the, the stevia. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, it's uh, stevia. Uh, this took sweetener is non uh, nutritive zero uh, calorie sweetener, but it's accompanied by aftertaste. Okay, licorice aftertaste. Okay, and uh, it's reported to about 200 to 400 times sweetener than than sugar sucrose. But depend if this is sweetness to 400 times sweeter depend on the type and the application of formulation. That means it depends on what type of product food you use and also how you use the formulation to, uh, to reach the, uh, the sweetness is from 200 to 400 times. Okay. As I mentioned, there is uh, two chemical structures, stibicide and rubicide. And uh, uh, currently in, in 2008, uh, FDA approved uh, stevia, but approved only one from these two sweetness. As I mentioned, there is two sweetness here, stevioside and uh, ribudoside, which is known also by Rip A or uh, Ribiana A. The FDA approved only, uh, in 2008, approved only Ribiana, that's ribuside or Ribiana A. Did not rebuke the stevioside because there is some research, some people did research in 2008, and they claimed that there is some uh, side effect from using the stibucide. And that's why FDA approved only one, one, uh, one of these two compounds as, as a safe. They call it GRAS. GRAS that means generally recognized as safe. So they, they said that mean this is already GRAS status of, of the uh, stevia is only ribucide. It has a great GRAS status which is generally recognized as safe. Okay. So, one second. I'm going to do a little tiny bit of spelling because when we say side, when we're talking about um, chemistry like we are today, most people are going to think it's C-I-D-E uh, as, um, as a killing agent. But these are steviocide, S-T-E-V-I-O-S-I-D-E, and then the sweeter one, which was approved by the FDA as grass is spelled yeah. R-E-B-A-U-D-I-O, like Rebadioside, nice. S-I-D-E, dash A. So if nice. you're listening just to the podcast and not looking at the slide where we have the chemical structure up, um, you will be able to kind of keep better track here. So when we're talking with our discussion today, almost all of it is going to be about the Rabio red. How do you say it? Rabadio side A. Uh, side. If you find and look to the, the the label on the food products, they usually they, they, they write it under Rib A or Ribiana. They make it very easy. Okay. So if you found the label Rib A already mentioned Ribiana, you know that means actually this is the Rabio side A. Okay. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's, 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 it's important to, to, to notice this too that if you're talking about stevia, it's a stevia plant uh, which you can grow in your backyard or in your garden, and you put a leaf of that in your in your tea, it's very sweet. Uh, it contains very many, uh, uh, an entire panel of these different compounds. Is that correct, Doctor? That's uh, true. Stevi stevia I, I, sides and rubidio sides. Uh, so we're not necessarily talking about the same thing when right. we talk about stevia or a sweetener that is exclusively Rev A or stevia type. And, and I'll, I'll bring up why that could be important later on. Go ahead. Anyway, I can mention that, that in already in, in, in uh, South America, they're using that dimensions, using the leaf and they boil it as, and use it as a sweetener. But uh, if they until now, disapproved this, this concept. I mean, we can't use the leaf as is and, the, and the boil it and, and the drink that's the, the, the extracts as uh, until now FDA did not approve this. Okay. It was not acceptable in the United States to, to boil the leaf. <laughs> oh, well, the I'm not my own leaf, right? <laughs> <laughs> I won't do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So when we're talking about stevia though, I've noticed that there are a lot of products that make you think it's got stevia in 
and maybe it only has a tiny amount because it's super sweet, right? It's an intense sweetener with almost 400 times the sweetness of regular sugar. So it's mixed with some kind of a carrier, and that carrier right. is usually, usually erythritol. Is that fair to say? Uh, yeah, because uh, the stevia, let me mention the name stevia as a general, because the rip A, that means that stevia, when you, it already has a very aftertaste, licorice taste. Right. And that is it's unpleasant. So the manufacturers found that mean if you can mix this uh, stevia extract, with uh, uh, erythritol, erythritol is sugar alcohol, okay, and they found by adding erythritol to the stevia, it can mask this licorice taste on the aftertaste, so, so it can eliminate it. But there is this advantage of this because erythritol, it's not zero calorie. Erythritol is about, it's mean you know sugar is about four kilo, four four calorie, kilo calorie, okay. Erythritol about two, so that means you add some some uh, some calorie to the stevia. So you can say the stevia already is a tabletop sweetener stevia. You can say that zero calorie sweetener because it has some kind of calorie. Okay. But it's very low comparing to sugar. But, but let, let's, let's draw that distinction too because we talked uh, in an earlier show about aspartame and how if you buy packets of, 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 of uh, NutraSweet, for example, uh, it's, it's bulk, it has a bulking agent uh, instead of the erythritol, though they use um, the sugar, dextrose, D glucose, so that if we're talking about dental benefits, we negate some of the dental benefits by adding sugar as a bulking agent to the high intensity sweetness. So erythritol would be a very safe dental bulking agent to add to speed. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, it's alcohol, sugar alcohol, and it can. Uh, uh, can prevent the tooth decay, uh, one of this. All right, so now we have the, the rib A, and we have it in the package packets, and what, where, so how stable is it? Is this something that you can bake with? Can you boil it? Can you bake it and cook it, or can you freeze it? Question, I was going to talk about that when I talk about application. It's... Uh, uh, it's very hard to use it for bake. You, you can use it for bake, but already does not get the browning. You know, mainly baked good. It's already when you bake it, you have some kind of browning. Yeah. On, okay. And this browning, okay, they, they is based on Miller something called Miller reaction. That means you have some sugar has some keto sugar, keto or aldehyde sugar, reducing sugar from the sucrose. When well, the amino acid exists in the in the, in the dough, for example can making this middle reaction and the reaction resulting on the browning. So uh, the reducing sugar as sh uh, the aldehyde or keto, it can enhance this browning. But because the stevia, stevia, stevia does not have the keto compound or aldehyde compound, so it does not cause browning. So you, if you wanted to use it, you have to have some few for small amount of sugar, okay, to enhance this browning. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. But, uh, uh, before I, I was going to talk about application about in, in later on, but uh, I, I want to mention how the, the manufacturing of, of, of Oh, yeah, stevia. okay. Uh, you know, this stevia is already, is, is, uh, this is a plant already. You have to grow the plant, okay? And two methods to grow the plant. You can use seeds, or you can use uh, root cutting. That means you can you cut the roots, okay? And uh, usually for cultivated, cultivated fairies in greenhouse, and if you, in case of the root cutting, you cut the root about three to four inches tall, and then you transplant it in the in the early spring. That means you, usually they growing the, the stevia uh, plant in the early spring, if you, from seed or from the root cutting. Okay, and uh, you wait and the, the the plant until it's start starting to 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 flowering to make flower. Mm -hmm. You know, very important. That means the timing of harvest. This the the, 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 the leaf is very important. Because if you harvest shorter, that means that mean you low concentration of the sweetener will be very low. If you harvest after longer times than the optimum time, that means that means this, this sweetener will be break down in the plant and you lose the yield. So we have to see exactly the, the perfect time to, to harvest the, the, the leaf from the plant when you already have the high concentration of the stevia sugar.
-hmm. And usually he found that uh, the high concentration when ready the plant to start flowering. Okay. So they harvest the, the, the leaf, uh, they dry it and uh, uh, grind it, then extract it by hot water. That means it's already soluble in water, so that when you do, you do hot water extraction, you can separate, you can extract the, the, the sweetness from the from uh, uh, the leaves. Okay. Then you do filtration to remove the residue, and you have already the, the extract which contains the seedicide. This is a very very important step here because when you extract, you have only the only seedicide, and you have the also rip A both together. In that case, you have to separate. You have to, you have to separate rip A from CB side. Okay. So in that case, you have two column separation. Okay, to separate rip A, and that's the one which you're using from from the CB side. And after that, by using ethanol, you can precipitate the the, the sweetness uh, from the from the. Surely after you do that, you you do after before you do that, you do resins application. Resin is trying to absorb the uh, rip A and CB side from the other chemical compound. Okay, and after that you do elution by 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 water, and that's in case you that as we do elution, that means you remove this compound from the resin, mm -hmm. as you see, CB side and uh, rib, and then you do the column separation to to already separate rip A from uh, CB side. Then you do crystallization. Okay, to have the rip A. Compound. So it's uh, uh, and that's that's the reason for doing this column separation is as I mentioned because there is concern about the stibucide that if there already is some there has some I'm going to talk about this later yeah and that's already some have some side effect which. Uh, what uh, kind of what kind of side effects is it like licorice? Does it increase uh, the uh, blood pressure? Does it is it like that uh, all where you get a loose stool? What what's the side effect? Uh, I well, I will talk about this. I was going to talk about it later, but anyway, I can I can <laughs> mention. Yeah, one initial concern from stibucide is that mean there some people some scientists show that mean reduce fertility. Uh, fertility. Oh, okay, that's bad. Yeah, that mean reducing the the sperm count, but uh, uh, later on they found that mean that's that's already is not those this case is not true. Oh. So that now shows that no a, a negative uh, outcome from this. Okay. The second concern this occurred happened in 2008, and that's why the, this published in 2008. So another concern about stevia and that's why uh, FDA in 2008 when they approved stevia, they approved only rip A because. In 2008, there is some another concern raised uh, in publication that uh, stibucide uh, can contribute to cancer. Okay, and there's also noted that some of uh, some test tube and animals. Okay, a study shows that stibucide can cause genetic mutation and chromosome damage and DNA breakage. Okay, but actually, later on, it was discovered also is is not uh, it's not true. And uh, in 2014, FDA approved the stibucide. That means last year, or actually, <laughs> stibucide been approved by FDA. Okay. So in generally, that means stibu has not been shown to have to lead any adverse effects on health uh, at all. But I that mean I'm expecting in the future, if already as FDA approved uh, uh, stibucide in 2014 as already safe. That means in uh, manufacturing, you don't have to do the column separation to remove the rip A from stibucide. That means oh, that's what okay. can use the cost of, uh, cost of production. Oh, so so that, this, is, this is very interesting that, that you brought this up, that there's so many differences between the stibucide and the rubidioside. And, and uh, I, I'm looking at a paper from Yadav 2012 where he says, the, uh, his group says the stevia side is antibacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, and anti-hyperglycemic, whereas the rebodioside A has been reported to be clinically insignificant. So it looks like the stevia side is more metabolically, metabolically active, at least when we consume it. Do you yeah. have any ideas on, on how, how that could be? Yeah, I, I think, I think uh, 
You are right. Yeah, I, I, that means that recently I still see some good good side for stable side then, uh, based on the research. Okay, you see, there's so a the lot of conflict. You can find it on this kind. of People uh, uh, report or publish something negative, and suddenly you found that later on it's not true because using uh, high doses of concentration lower higher than uh, the human consumption or. And you maybe you did that in test tube or animal, which already is not resembled to uh, human body. Anyway, uh, can I continue or uh, another question? Oh, Any? go ahead. <laughs> I can continue. Okay. Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, the, I want to mention about acceptable daily intake. Mention we mentioned about aspartame. Uh, there is acceptable daily intake, which is uh, the intake. It's which ADI about 33 milligram per kilo body weight. In the case of stevia side, stevia, it's about four milligram per kilo body weight. It's very, wow. very comparing to uh, the consumption of uh, uh, of aspartame. That's really astonishing because I, you know, you would think that because. Uh, stevia is natural, I've got my little air quotes up here, that um, you would be able to have unlimited amount, but really it's only a tiny fraction, looks like about 10% of the amount acceptable for a uh, for use with aspartame. So that's, yeah, this, I'm glad you brought that up, that's pretty interesting. This is, uh, this kind of schedule uh, didn't tag is done also based on a study by feeding the animals already different concentration and mm -hmm. see the how it's combined metabolite in the body and what is the side effect. So probably they found that the metabolism of the stevia is very low metabolism comparing to the uh, aspartame, which is amino acids, by bipeptide amino acids. Well, I think we have to recognize that, that stevia, uh, although it's completely natural plant-based, it, it is met metabolically active. So if you go to extremely high concentrations, you could be getting a drug-like effect, which is not necessarily bad because it does seem to have some anti-diabetic, uh, anti-LDL effect at very high doses. Right. I, I agree. Yeah, that mean, but so, as I mentioned, that mean until now you can't use the leaf as as easy. <laughs> I think in the future probably FDA will approve using the boil, boil the leaf yeah, because it's, if there is a farm, there is no any, if the, if the people in South America, they do that for hundreds of years and there is no sure. any side effect. So, uh, it can be done, yeah. Because actually there's a lot of benefits. I read a lot of benefit from uh, from the stevia extract, not not making the pure uh, rip A or pure stevia that mean using the extract as all from the plant. That means they can, they, 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 they said that mean uh, it can, uh, reduce uh, uh, blood glucose, low in blood glucose, uh, reduce blood pressure, it also anti-inflammatory, anti-tumor, anti-diarrhea, and also because the sweetness is out, without calories means it's also it's very losing weight, okay, and also prevent from tooth decay. decay. So this already, this uh, benefit, no, uh, not only from uh, purified rip A or suicide, this benefit is done based on a study on using, using the leaf extract as well. Totally, leaf extract. Uh, may I talk about the property now or any question before I will go to property or? Uh... I'm good. I'm just fascinated. This is just, it's just so, so bizarre. Okay, go ahead. Okay, it's, uh, stevia is soluble in water. Okay, that's why extraction is done by, by just hot water here. Yeah. yeah. It's a wide range of pH. And also it's heat stable, so, okay. But the only dis disadvantage which I mentioned before is, is uh, aftertaste, which is liquorice like aftertaste. And that's why the, usually they adding the resorotol, mix it with the resorotol, the sugar alcohol resorotol, uh, to remove the mask is this aftertaste here. Uh, some people also, some uh, manufacturers, they mix also uh, stevia with dextrose or maltodextrin and the natural flavor, but uh, all, all this all this mixture can increase the, 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 the calorie. 
So it may even even a uh, resveratrol already can increase the calorie of the. It's not zero calorie. It will be something that's carrying some kind of calorie. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, uh, the the safety, okay. I think I mentioned uh, uh, I mentioned about safety. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention about. Uh, uh, I think I mentioned about the sweetener, about 200, 400 cyan yeah. sweet. Uh, which is, Sorry, we uh, got off your off your your little track there. So yeah, uh, we did talk about the the sweetness, but we didn't really talk too much about the safety, other than to say that um, four milligrams per kilo body weight was the acceptable amount. Uh, for safety. Uh, most likely that mean uh, uh, sweet, uh, stevia is uh, a very safe sweetener because Japanese is using this sweetener for over 40 years without any any complaint. Okay, they use it before before us before United States. Yeah. I mean, I write I uh, approved it in 2008. It's about uh, seven years. That means Japanese for 40 years using stevia sweet as sweetener, and also they conducted about 40. Thousand clinical study on stevia, wow. and that is safe. Yeah. But also, I mean, right now we don't know exactly. We know it is safe, but we we there is lacking study for long term. Okay, we don't know exactly if long term what effect of long term. But already we can get this effect of long term. If you look to to go to that to see the, what what effect of stevia on uh, the people consumed for hundred years in South America and, and Asia. But there is no that until now there is no any uh, uh, scientific data done by a researcher to the effect of stevia on long the long term. We know it's safe already for, for four years or whatever, yeah, but we don't know the what effect of, of long term. Does it have any topical effects? You know, we're finding that xylitol especially has has a number of really beneficial attributes when applied to the skin. Um, when applied to the mucosa, and I'm wondering if stevia has some of those other benefits, and I think Dr. Peldiak kind of alluded to maybe there were. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm waiting to hear from him. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 indeed. I, I'm, just, I'm just looking at one here that uh, I'd say for the topical stevia ointment and oil stevia both speed up wound healing and fight bacteria. So, yeah, it has to be topically. Can you repeat that, Dr. Verdek, because there's just some, some news outside, noise outside my uh, my office. I could not hear it very well. Can you repeat that? Right. That uh, stevia has been used topically for wound healing, uh, both uh, extracts and, and uh, crude, extra, crude extracts and, and some specific extracts from stevia. That's uh, apparently helps to speed up wound healing. Yeah, I never read. I didn't read that. Uh, but this medical application, yeah, that's uh, that's really good. Good something. Uh, not for for digestion. Talk about just uh, healing wound. Yeah. Uh, Asian Pacific Journal of Topical Biomedicine, 2012. <laughs> yeah, I, I, go ahead. Cutting edge information right here. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I said, what else are you going to hear about? I don't know. Must <laughs> witness. <laughs> <laughs> another application, but does have nothing to do with the sweetness. Right. So, and, Dr. Kildiak does it. As you mentioned also, the, the anti-inflammatory effect. And, and what, what I'm waiting to find out when they investigate more is, is what kind of concentrations we need. Right. And, and, uh, and, and, and if there is going to be a, a, this pharmacological or drug type effect if you go very high with the concentration. But uh, that, that's, that's beyond what we talk about as a sweetener. Yeah, that's what I mentioned in, in benefit. I said that it's anti-inflammatory, anti-tumor, anti-diarrhea. This some this also nothing to do with the sweetener. I mean, another benefit. This, I read about that. Yeah, but I uh, uh, that's how this usually if you go use the, the the plant extract as 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 a total, not just uh, the side or riboside. You use all things. Extracted. Well, that's one of the major reasons I wanted to have an entire show an entire series on sweeteners because some of them have some really magical <laughs> kind of attributes and we can't just lump everything together and everybody's all of a sudden eating sawdust 
because everybody's afraid of sugar because it's not it's not real. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, in general, uh, I mean, stevia has not been shown to to lead to any adverse effects on health whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So, but, but now, uh, go ahead. It doesn't break down to fructose once it gets into the digestive system, does it? Because it seems like fructose no, is the no, one that's the problem. It's go direct to uh, the waste. It does not uh, metabolize. No, oh, it doesn't. Okay. Uh, doctor, uh, the only one negative I was able to find about stevia, potential negative, is that it, um, it, it does interfere with... Uh, several strains of Lactobacillus reuteri, yeah. which are a beneficial bacteria. But I, it, it, it looks like it's, it's inconsistent. It's not across all strains, and it might not have any clinical significance at all, especially if you use some type of cultured product, such as yogurt or kefir. Right. Yeah, lactic acid bacteria, but yeah, it's, I, I get didn't hear that. It has what, what effect on lactic acid bacteria? It's good, uh, good effect or bad effect. I didn't hear, I didn't hear this well. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, they, they don't know enough now, but it, it's an interesting line of investigation. I uh, uh, see that, that some of these bacteria are are possibly inhibited by uh, stevia. So uh, it's, it's again something we just have to watch for as, as this line of research is developed. Yeah, I, I, uh, but I, I understand that. Uh, some people use stevia in, uh, in yogurt, so that means... Uh, Together, yeah. So it, if using in yogurt, that means it actually has no bad effect on starter culture or lactic acid bacteria. Anyway, that means right. it's, 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 a lot of, lot of research is going on here. You know, and uh, and sometimes you find that in, uh, this research does not apply to in, uh, in, in human. Anyway. Um, we're, we're coming up on time, so let's let's hit the uh, next couple uh, of high points. Yeah, I want to mention that the stevia market already is mad. The, the manufacturer predicting that uh, there's in, going to be increased demand on this, on the stevia in the future. Even the World, World Health Organization estimated that stevia probably going to, to catch about 28 percent of all uh, zero calorie sweeteners. Wow. Uh, yeah, but uh, finally, I want to mention about this uh, the. Uh, the case again is Cargill, okay? I wanted to end up with this. Okay. Okay. Uh, Cargill, there is, uh, Cargill is manufactured as Truvia, okay? Truvia, that's already, it's uh, Rip A or uh, Ribena with mixed with uh, erythritol. And there is two litigation actually uh, on uh, against uh, Cargill in 2013, mm -hmm. uh, claiming that that sweetener is not, they claim that it's, Cargill said it's natural, which I believe is natural. Uh, they claim that it's not natural because uh, uh, Cargill doing uh, uh, multiple steps of purification and using erythritol. And actually, I believe that erythritol is natural because the done by fermentation already exists, even exists already, low concentration in, uh, in milk product or other product. So I admit to me that means it's 100% natural. But the only thing which is damaging from their claim, they claim that uh, uh, resveratrol uh, is done by fermentation, actually, using glucose for fermentation. And uh, Cargill's, uh, they, they get the glucose from corn starch. That means they have the corn, uh, they extract the starch and break down the starch to, by enzymes to glucose and using glucose as a carbon source for fermentation to produce the uh, resveratrol. The damaging thing is that means that that's the claim they said that means using genetically engineered corn. Well, I mean, the cause from genetic engineered the cold. And that's to me, that's, that's so that means damage. That's very damage. But actually, uh, in 2014, uh, Cargill does not want to to continue this litigation and uh, uh, so trying to settle this. So they settled it with about paying about $6,000.1 million uh, to the, the, the people who did this claim and I think $1.4 million, yeah. $6 million lawyer. About total $8 million. 8 million but uh, in that case, uh, they maintain that means that the product is natural. One, I believe it's just ready, it's, it's natural without this, all this hassles. But only thing is concerned about it is using genetic engineered corn, and that's true or not. Okay. 
there's a thing that I became aware of in the last, I don't know, 18 months or so called litigation trolls. And they go around and they find little little thingamajobbers and then they exploit them and get rich. And it sounds like that's what's been happening with this. I know I was afraid to talk that already on, on, uh, on, on the air because that means you couldn't uh, that mean, uh, <laughs> it's true, that means most of this already just uh, uh, to, to earn money, earn, earn money from companies. I, I agree with that. <laughs> well, and that's you. that's what it sounds like. It was a little fishy when I was reading it in that in that Food Navigator publication. I mean, they just you know it was just a report, and um, I was like, well, wait a minute. And so I'm glad to know that I am not all alone in. Uh, no, no, I am aware about that. Yeah, and that's <laughs> most of the companies are facing facing this problem. Yeah, because uh, and it's, it's, you're trying to to settle it out of court because we don't want to go this hassles and divert them from their their plan or their uh, projects. Mm -hmm. So they settle it by paying a certain amount of money and that's it. And, get, and uh, move on. But uh, finally, I will end up with that. I, mean, I didn't mention the application in details. A sweetener, it appeared to be uh, a good, uh, found in all, uh, all bro food products, including diet soda, uh, tabletop sweetener, we know that, chewing gum, Yogurt, I mean yogurt has lactic acid bacteria, and also can found in fruit products, canned fruit products, and uh, Japanese using also in uh, uh, Japanese uh, style uh, vegetable products, and also been used in seafood. So it has a wide range of application, but I mentioned is you can't use it for uh, for baked goods because it not cause the browning, and if you want to use the browning, you have to add sugar with this, with the stevia, and that's of course you will end up with products has some 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 calories. And I think that is, that's it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Dr. Peldiak, did we cover your list? Oh. <laughs> he left off. Thank you, Dr. Abraham. And uh, I appreciate your time and your willingness to share with us all of the ins and outs of some of these uh, different kind of sugars as we make our way through the sugar show on Crosslink Radio. Thank you. You're very welcome. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye now.